Hi everyone. It wasn't too long ago that I wrote an article on Medium on how you can connect uh, React, React Router, and Redux and Redux Thumb together. And the article kind of got me a lot of responses and uh, I was really pleased by that and a lot of people were sort of looking at the example code on GitHub and maybe taking it away to use themselves. And one of the things that the structure of the app done was it kind of composed all of the Redux logic together and traditionally with Redux, if we have a look at one of the Redux examples, is you have these folders called actions and your regular components folder. You then may have uh, containers, reducers, action types, and uh, you know constants and various other things, all related to Redux. But that can, can be quite overwhelming for someone that's maybe new to React or certainly new to uh, Redux and the, you know, and the single store principle. And I think that is a really, really nice uh, folder structure for your application. And I've worked on large applications which follow this um, process. But as you begin to spit that out, so if you have actions, action types, and constants, it it comes a bit sort of comes some to sort of go into this file to do that and this file to do that. When sometimes a lot of the uh, reducers are quite small. If if you take a look at your application and maybe structure it in a way that it's it's built of smaller composed components, then you can really just, you know, forget having all of those folders and just have it in one file. So that's what I wanted to show you uh, in this video is a different approach to structuring your Redux applications. And it's one in which um, I'm really, uh, I, I kind of use quite a lot. And I think it's really nice and easy to get going, uh, certainly with Redux. So I'll show you the application that I built. We um, we built this application here, um, which showed you how to navigate between pages using the uh, React Router Redux module. And that just allows you to just dispatch that push action. Then we also have our you know traditional uh, asynchronous uh, incrementer here and uh, we also have a button that takes us to the about page and we have that counter there and that state is obviously kept when we transition between pages. So Redux, really great stuff there. And we now have uh, the repo for that project. And you can see on uh, Medium, I wrote that tutorial and if you want to follow that through, please do. Um, it kind of just walks you through getting started building uh, this application and showing you where all the files live, what the files are and what certain things do and you know the routing, the containers and the store and things like that. Um, it's kind of my boilerplate when it comes to connecting these libraries together now. Um, there's, you know, there's not an overly enormous amount of uh, added weight to the project. Um, it kind of just allows you to get going and get started very quickly. So if we jump to the source folder, you'll see there's not a great deal here compared to the um, Redux to do's example. We have a folder called containers and we have a folder called modules. The modules is the important thing here. We have our store and index, which just kind of link together our um, Redux state. But you'll see inside of this, our root producer is coming from a folder called modules. So if we go into the modules folder, you can see that um, we are importing our counter reducer, and then we are just exporting those uh, combined reducers. And we're also including the router reducer as well, which is um, part of the tutorial, and that's where you would do that kind of logic uh, in a project like this. So if we pop into the counter, and this is really where the magic now lives, we are exporting our consts here in case we need to use them across our application. Um, and then we have some initial state here. Now I've found if you structure your application um, really well, that you kind of don't need to even export these as well. Um, you know, you can, all your logic can belong, belong in here and only if other reducers need to listen to those, would you need to export uh, you know, a specific one of those. So we have our initial state set here. Some people like to abstract that state to a global initial state and it kind of contains, you know, it would contain the, the initial state for counter and posts and users and projects and any other reducers that you've got going. But I like to place this initial state inside of this file because at the end of the day, 
this is where this state is maintained and updated. Then here we have a single export and that is our reducer. And obviously our traditional reducer is filled with switch statements and it acts on those constants above that we've set. And I also like to prefix um, my constants here with the name of the module that it is. You could also call this a duck and I'll go into what I mean by this and that's kind of the approach I'm following here. And this, you know, traditional Redux stuff going on here and then below we have our actions. And, um, you know, you place your action creators in here as well if you had any, but in this example it's fairly simple. Um, you know, we're just dispatching them on the fly here. So it's really quite simple, quite cool. Um, I really like this approach and uh, certainly encourage that you check it out as well. Now, if I pop over to uh, a library here, you'll see where I got this from. So this is known as the ducks approach um, to bundling your reducers. And it's really, really straightforward, like I've explained. Uh, but in this example here, um, you know, these guys aren't um, exporting those cons because they're just using this file, um, like I mentioned, but there's a few rules which you must follow. Um, you know, very simple, very straightforward. And if you follow this and you logically um, structure your state, you don't have to have, um, you know, huge and huge amounts of files and folders um, for a particular store. Uh, you can just create your different reducers and your different ducks for files and they can maintain their own parts of the store. Um, you know, so like I said earlier, compose your state of smaller parts and it becomes easier to maintain when you have a huge, huge, huge monolithic application that contains Redux and various other things. Then when you have all of these folders for constants and um, reducers and everything else, it does kind of become um, quite painful to update and edit all of those. But that's purely based on my uh, experience. Um, maybe it's my um, code that has been done like that, maybe it hasn't been structured in the right way. So I'm certainly saying that's not a bad way. This is just an alternate way that you can use and it's one which I really like. So yeah, definitely, definitely check this out um, if it interests you as well. Um, so have a read through the uh, rules here and you can see um, what's going on. And um, again, some people like to import their actions into files like this. Some people like to import them like this. It is, you know, no big deal. Um, they don't really have any strict rules on that, I think. Um, so yeah, check this out, it's really awesome. And if you are um, using Redux quite a lot in your application or um, you find yourself writing the same boilerplate code, there are other libraries as well, which you can use with this approach that allow you to compose reducers and actions using a higher order component um, and various functions in your application to sort of just build that mock um, store or whatever it is you're building. You can use those helpers to um, you know, write that code for you, which is uh, can take away some of the pain. Um, but I'm kind of old fashioned. Now. I like to know what code is in my application. So I kind of like writing everything out. And then when you come to look at it, you know, you don't have to go into other files to look at helpers and things. You can kind of just see exactly what's going on in one file. And that's what I like about this approach is I can see exactly how my state is manipulated, updated, and what actions do those within one file. Um, I haven't got to split my screen to open multiple files. It's really, really uh, an approach that has worked for me over the past couple of months really well in some large applications. So definitely check it out. I'll leave links to these um, files, folders, and tutorials in the uh, show notes. Please uh, subscribe if you think these uh, videos are helpful to you. Um, reach out to me on Twitter. Follow me over there if you want to see regular things like this posted. I'm at Notrab. That's just Barton backwards and um, subscribe on Twitter. Uh, got any questions, leave a message below or on Twitter and I'll get back to you. And I am working on some other videos um, that people have requested. So uh, this being one of them and I'll um, publish those and let you know when those are ready. So have a great day, happy coding.